Today I'm going to be building for you guys in episode 3 Obi-Wan lightsaber. Let's go over all the parts I'm going to be using. Aside from the hilt, the next most important thing is the chassis. This one's from Black Lion Sabers. And of course we have two hilt side and one blade side NeoPixel connector. And this build's going to be using a Profi soundboard with an OLED display. And then we have the kill switch. Moving on to the clamp card control box, we have these two little buttons we're going to be using. For sound, we have the Smuggler's Outpost 28mm bass speaker. And lastly, we have the battery, battery tabs, and rotary chassis PCB. Now that we have that out of the way, we can move on to actually installing this thing. This should be a fun one. The first thing I like to do on thin neck lightsabers is work on the emitter, so let's start there. Let's start off by putting the pins in the NeoPixel connector. Okay, now that we have the pins in place and we set it up for chassis detection down the line, let's work on this blade side connector. While this isn't actually going to be used for the blade, we're going to be using it inside of the grip so we can have a removable chassis. Before we can move on, we gotta take apart the hilt. Now the blade side connector and its holder go inside of the grip, then we feed the wires through the rest of the neck and the emitter. Next up, we put the NeoPixel connector holder in place before we solder the wires to the NeoPixel connector. And finally, after the scary part of screwing everything in place, we have it done. So we'll just let the E6000 we used to hold everything in place cure overnight. In the meantime, let's work on the removable speaker and battery module. For this section, we're going to need a rotary chassis PCB along with a speaker and battery tabs. We'll start with the speaker. Now that the wires are soldered on, we can put it in the chassis. And struggle with it a little bit before we move on to the battery tabs. With the negative tab done, we can move on to the positive. With the positive in place, we can move on to the rotary chassis PCB. With a total of four wires and four parts, the speaker and battery module is complete. The next thing we have to do is the OLED display and the soundboard. Since this is the main chassis section, there's a few parts we need to put in it, but I want to start with the rotary chassis PCB. This is the side with the pins, so we'll start there. And then we attach the wires, two for the speaker, one negative, and one positive. Now for the NeoPixel connector. This is our second NeoPixel connector of the build. The first one was in the emitter, this one's going on the chassis. We're also going to be wiring the blade detection wire to it, as well as the second data line. And now we have the power switch, which goes in this nice little spot on the chassis here. Next, we solder the positive wires to the NeoPixel connector and then push it in place. So now in the chassis we have the NeoPixel connector, power switch, and rotary chassis PCB. Next up, we have the OLED display. I went ahead and put some heat shrink on it to protect the joints. And now here it is in the chassis. It's gonna look really nice when it's lit up. But with that, nearly everything is complete. We only have the soundboard and the buttons left to go. Since we can only install the buttons once everything else is done, let's start with the soundboard. Since we're using the Profi soundboard, it's actually gonna be a little bit easier to wire than my Crystal Focus builds. And once we have this all set up, we'll move on to the buttons. The buttons are definitely the trickiest part of this build. This is what I came up with. I essentially pinned down the button wires with the screws holding the clamp box in place. I also insulated the joints. But the next part to make this whole button situation work is this rocker. This came with the hilt itself, but it needs some modifications in order to make it work. After a while of fine tuning and more sanding, we can now press the buttons. And now we connect the button wires to the soundboard, which brings us to the end of the soldering. And now all the components are complete. Let's admire how it looks. After securing the main chassis in place, the only thing left to do is to glue on the clamp card. There's actually one more thing I want to do before we turn on this lightsaber, and it involves this blade plug. As you can see, it's completely made of metal, so I 3D printed the circle to go inside it. Now the reason I did this is because this blade plug sits directly on top of the NeoPixel pins, and since it's all metal, it has a possibility of short-circuiting the connector, so I decided to make a little plastic barrier just for safety. Now even if you leave the lightsaber on with the blade plug in, there won't be a possibility of short-circuiting anything, because now all the pins touch is a little plastic circle. And now it's time to try out this lightsaber. Let's see if it works. <laughs> 
It made a sound and the OLED screen turned on, so that's a good sign. Let's try to ignite it. The calibration lightsaber font works. Let's see if our chassis detection works. Swapping between functional and non-functional lightsaber modes works perfectly. Now all that's left to see if we can call this build complete is to see if the blade lights up. Looks like it works. Now it's time to show off a little. This build is officially complete. Hope you guys like this project and look forward to more in the future.